Okay, now we're doing the Inner Atlantis. Cool. This is the... This, I think around this and Sink or Swim were like the levels that I got stuck on the most. We're here! It wasn't easy, but the journal was right all along. Without it, we never would have made it. But here we are, in Atlantis itself. And, yep. Just check out this level design, oh my god. Yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty expensive, it's also got a nice ruined thing to it, so... It definitely fit in with uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Yeah, it kind of does, actually. <laughs> also, I love that uh, Leonard Nimoy did the uh, voices of that. Rest in peace, man. Yep. Live long and prosper. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so first thing first, let's check out through this door here. Great, more spiders and more birds. That's 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 what you always wanted in this game. Just wanting to come across more fucking ostriches and spiders at death. Yeah, does this game have quite a number of enemy varieties in it? Yeah, as you might have noticed, we've, yeah. we've encountered quite a few, like rock monsters, lobsters. I can't carry any more of these. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've used up there. Haven't actually used a lot of cat food, so might as well eat a lot. Yeah. Fucking spiders, that's what we need. At least you get five crystals here. You do indeed. It's really good that those uh, guys are only taking like two shots to kill. Yeah, they do. I noticed. Took like five punches, didn't it? Well, six punches. Yeah, five, six. They take six punches or like two boomerang shots to kill. Yeah, I, I noticed with the boomerang shots that you just killed with two hits. Yeah, are there any more of those truck stages that we saw earlier? I think that's the, the that's the only truck stage in the game. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that, that one looked chaotic. Yeah, that one. That one <laughs> I did not find that to be a very fun level. Yeah. That's the thing, even games that you like, there's going to be certain parts that you don't like, so... That's common. I can't carry any more of these. I can't carry any more of these. So we got to switch over to Kila. Oh, maybe not Kila. I have to switch to no one, apparently. Interesting. It is interesting. Maybe it's just because they have like a, a checkpoint there. Yeah, and if you're going back and forth and switching between characters, so far it doesn't seem that annoying because you only do it on occasion so far. Because so far you're not doing it constantly, you've only done it a few times from what I noticed and most of the time you're playing as Milo, so I don't think it's that bad so far. Yeah, I think... And having to go back and change your characters, I mean you seem like so far you've only done that a few times throughout the game so far. Yeah, I think it's a bit of an exaggeration that you have to like constantly switch back and forth. Yeah, because that's what I heard in Caddy's review. I thought, okay, that seems a bit annoying. And that so far, from what I've seen, you've only done that a few times. So it doesn't really seem that annoying. So Yeah, a bit exaggerated it seems to me. I mean, in the end, he thought that game was okay, but yeah, I thought it was a lot better than that. Yeah, but like I said, I didn't think it was because I think the whole going back and forth and switching characters constantly would get repetitive and quite annoying. But like I said, you've only done it a few times so far, and it doesn't really seem that bad to me because you know it doesn't even take that long to just switch the characters and go back to the checkpoints anyway. So. Aside from the really odd slowdown that you yeah. get, yeah, uh, that's, that's why I think sometimes i try to look into things myself and see if I think it's as bad as people say, or if I agree with them, or if I don't agree with them, and so on. Mm. Got so many uh, coloured crystals at this point. Yeah, I know. You're crazy. Okay, so how do we get those down? Nah, can't knock it down, so probably have to go another way. The door is locked. Oh, no shit. Okay, so there's got to be another way around this place. They should get a lockpick and they'll be the master of unlocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the best way to go about things. Yeah, it turns out all you have to do is just kick the door. 
<laughs> yeah, it is, it's a shame you don't have Barry with you on this. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if we could just have, like, crossovers and this shit? Yeah, Milo, here is our buck pick. Oh, okay, he's a robot. <coughs> yeah, it might be handy if you, the master of the locking, take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love that game. Yeah, I think the game's great, actually, looking back. That's what makes it so iconic, I think. Yeah, it's, it's such a... It's such a great game. Yeah. It's also a really fun survival horror game as well, actually. <coughs> yeah, it's not like the layered ones, which felt more action. Yeah. The atmosphere no. in that game and music and its visuals for its time and its uh, difficulty and all the cool monsters you encountered and all of its weapons and its entertaining yet funny story and all kinds of stuff that happens in it. I mean, people complain about the controls, but I don't really think they're that bad. Once you adapt to them, they are tank like, but they do the job mostly well. And it kind of adds a lot to the horror aspect because you've got to try and keep yourself alive, and it'd be a bit too easy if the controls weren't tank like. So it really kind of goes well with the type of game that it is. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that was definitely a great game. It's a shame the uh, later games don't really have that horror aspect. Yeah, shame they don't really keep it. Yeah. That reminds me of a bloody Digimon I once saw when I was a kid. Wait, the crab thing reminds you of that? Yeah, it was one of the crab Digimons and uh, yeah, it did, because that was a crab Digimon that looked exactly like that. The way Milo's just spinning around as he's going up, it's priceless. <laughs> spinning around, move out of his way. He's Milo Fatch. Hey, that actually worked. <laughs> yeah, he's chopping you down. Oh, good, a radio here. Yep. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I think it just was at a checkpoint. Okay, so far this has been quite easy, but to be fair, this is a kid's game, so... Yeah, I, I wouldn't imagine it being that difficult. Yeah, the thing about thing, I mean, when it comes to kids' content, you should criticise it if there is something wrong. But at the same time, you can't be too critically nitpicky at the same time, I think. Yeah. Because it's not aimed at you, so there's that to consider. And that, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, I, I I feel as though you you, you got to take the um, Charlie Lawrence approach to this. You got to be tough, but you got to be fair about it too. Yeah, I mean, like obviously, if something's wrong, then you should point it out. But even if it is a kid's content, but sometimes you got to remember that it's not aimed at you, so it's not going to be too serious all the time because of that. So yeah, so that's why I don't. That's why because there are people who can get very picky with this stuff. So I think you kind of need to be. Yeah, like, like you said earlier, tough but fair at the same time. So I believe uh, the next section coming up here is a stealth section. Stealth section, oh boy. Oh, uh, not this part here. Ah, perfect, the marketplace key. Yeah. The door is locked. Well, we already knew that, Milo. That's why I got the key. To open it. Wow, an outsider. Be careful here. Atlantean guards don't like outsiders at all. Keep out of their sight or they'll arrest you. They're not afraid of anyone, except Princess Kida. Okay, so what we need to do is find our way through and get up to a radio so we can use Kida. Yeah, so it kind of tells you to change to Kida. So it already tells you. Yeah, except I think our radio is too far back, so you got to do this the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Unless you can't be bothered, then you would backtrack for a good reason. Wait, so... Wait. How'd you find the stealth sections then? Oh, I would say it was more of a semi stealth section, if anything. So you don't have to use stealth then? As you can see, I could just stand on top of here and he does nothing. 
Um, so actually, I've actually, I should get, I sent you a uh, clip of Tomb Raider 3 that I encountered. Yeah, yeah, I did see that one. What did you think of that? <laughs> that was just a funny bug. Yeah, the way the dinosaur just kept eating the guy, nothing happened. Oh, come on, I jumped on top of there. The Atlantean guards don't mess around. Now, where am I? Yeah, so if you get caught by the guards, you get sent to this jail area, so... Just and, switch and, the key, yeah. You, you can't switch the key down in this room. Ah, great. So, so you, you so have you, to go to another room then to switch the key You down. have to go and find uh, a radio uh, that is further on in the level. Right, yeah, because I think they knew it would probably make it a bit too easy. A bit too easy. I think what we need to do here to get around these guys is hide behind the blocks and just wait for them to pass on through. Yeah, and you have to avoid them. It's kind of hard to save that block in your way. Stop him. Ah, oh, yeah, they run a little too fast for you to, like, outrun them. So you really got to, like, use the blocks to your advantage. <laughs> it's kind of annoying how you have to backtrack, though, every time you get caught. Yeah, that is real fucking annoying. This might take a few attempts. I think what they should have done was add it where you at the start of the stealth section. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't just throw you back there and instead send you all the way back here. Okay, I think they're walking off that way, which gives me an advantage to run to this block. Oh no! They spotted me! Run! What? How did that guy spot me behind a block? He must have turned around by the time you made it. I don't like the look of prison food. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, I'll admit it is amusing to like, have different lines every time you get caught there. Yeah, but it's not amusing to backtrack every single time though, is it? Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, it doesn't make it funny to me if I have to backtrack for ages, so... Unless my stuff, stuff's not one of my strongest points. I always get caught. <laughs> Over there! Get them! You, come here! It's okay, I think we've outrun them. Good. At least you can outrun them. The veil above here looks dangerously loose. Now I just need to hope to God that there's a radio around this somewhere. Yeah, because if you, you don't want to do all that again, do you? That's why you got to be careful. I mean, good news is that they don't follow you through the door there, so... That's if, good, that's if, good. That is good. So it would have been a pain in the ass if they could follow you all the way through. Yeah. It's like what I said about there's a difference between challenge and then taking the mic, so... That's one of the reasons why I'm going to come out and say that I didn't like Ghosts and Goblins, so... <laughs> he said it, folks. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't have a problem with the game being challenging, but there's a difference between challenge and then going too far, and I think that game went too far. And even though it felt sluggish to play, it wasn't that memorable either. The only thing memorable about it was that it was too difficult. <laughs> So I kind of disagree when people keep saying that, oh, the game's hard, then you should uh, not criticise it. Well, if it's hard in a good kind of way, like a fair challenge sort of thing, then yeah, a hard game is good. But if it takes the mick and it's bullshit hard, then that's a different story. So Yeah, you don't want that to happen. Oh, I'm really glad I didn't fall over. Yeah, that's what I think anyway. What do you think? Uh, sorry, what was that? I got distracted by the guard there. I was just saying that... I mean, having a game that's hard is good, and a challenge is a good thing, but if it's bullshit hard, there's a different story. Yeah, bullshit hard I don't like. Yeah. Okay, is he just gonna literally stand there? Can I get to that block there? Oh, 
Okay, maybe if I can go into the site section, yeah. Please tell me there's a radio in here somewhere. There might be. As long as you find one, then we're all good. Okay, so I think what we need to do is push these blocks so we can jump over to that section there. Just make sure you concentrate, and then you'll be alright. Well, these parts I don't think we're going to have trouble with, like, pushing the blocks. No, it matters in trying to keep yourself alive. Oh, yeah. And try to avoid being caught yep. by guards, that's a, that's yep. a big bonus. Hey, don't you just love that the pushing mechanics here are a lot more simple than in Tomb Raider? Yeah. Or at least the other ones. Yeah. Because in the first three games, you have to push it once, then hold it down, and press it again. Whereas, yeah, whereas in Fall, that's when you just hold down the button and she kept on pushing it, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot less annoying in that regard. Yeah, that's what I liked about Fall. I think they just nailed the mechanics in Fall at that point. Like the move sets and whatnot. Ah, perfect. Where are we going? Hey, that's, that's the radio, isn't it? No, no, it's a it's a power. Oh, because it looked like it looked like it until it flashed it lit, the light blue. When it flashed the light blue, that's when I was like, oh, okay, it's not the radio. No, it's a piece of a mosaic. So we were both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd never said what it was. Okay, that doesn't matter. We got whatever it is we got. The mosaic must be used for like somewhere further in the level. Yeah, probably. Mortal Kombat. Milo wins. Fatality. <laughs> Just kill them with a punch. Yeah. What would Milo's fatality be if he was in Mortal Kombat? Killing him with the boomerang, I guess. <laughs> no, he would just keep going on and on about his science and his research, and then the enemy would just pull his ears out and actually kill himself over it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a way to like deal with your enemies, I guess. Yeah, annoying them, and then they get insanely fed up with it that they actually take themselves out. <laughs> that's what I mean. When you get characters who are intentionally being annoying on purpose, that's fine. So, because they're doing it on purpose. So. Yeah. Okay, so there is a way to save myself here. That if I run to the left, uh, there's a bridge I can get to. Yeah. So let's just hope to go that we can avoid this guy. Another staff section. Oh joy. Okay, we need to make it to that door. So it's only that guy there. Well, yeah. He's making his way back and forth. Be there, the camera's more useful. At least you made it. Yeah, you got you gotta take advantage like when he's as soon as he turns away you run through here. Yeah, at least they don't run super ultra speed to catch up here. No, it's like they're, they're they are faster than you, but not to the point uh, and then he can just catch you immediately. Yeah. Because that would just be annoying. Yeah, could you imagine if they caught you as soon as they said stop him, that's when you go back. Yeah, that, that would have been worse. I would fucking hate that. Because I've played some stealth games that were like that. And, that. and I'm just like, don't incorporate stealth mechanics into a game. Often, you shouldn't incorporate stealth mechanics into a game that's not built around stealth. It usually doesn't work very well when you do that. Yeah, you get fucked over way too easily. Yeah. That's why Mel Gasol and Splinter Cell do a good job because they were built around the idea of stealth, so. The missing piece! And there we go, a radio finally. Now we can actually play as Kida in this level. Good. The guards are only on lookout for strangers. If I can find someone known to them, they can explore Atlantis freely. Perfect. Awesome. Now we're not going to have any problems with those guards. No problems at all. I cannot carry any more of these. Are you sure about that, Dollface? <laughs> Dollface. I cannot carry any more of these. <laughs> well, you, I'm, I'm guessing he's playing too much Conquer, and now he's just copying the lines from that game. <laughs> yeah, I, I was referencing Conquer that way. So now when you walk back in through here, yeah, okay. nothing happens. Yep. 
This makes this section so much better now. Oh yeah, Kida's with you, but she can just tell that she can just go with Milo and say, "Hey, look, it's all right. He's not going to harm you. It's all right." Ah, eh. I mean, you know, with, with these sorts of level design, like it, it wasn't clearly wasn't designed for two players, so you know they kind of have to swap the characters around via radios. Yeah. Well, I was going to say normally, if this was the film, she would have gone with Milo and be like, "Hey, no, it's all right. He's with me. Don't hurt him." I guess for like you know. Gameplay reasons, you gotta include it. Yeah. And now I can walk through this part without getting annoyed by these guards again. Yeah. So thank God for that. Can you actually kill them as Kido? Uh, let me have a look here. Nope, you can just shoot them in the face and they'll walk by anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's like Metal Gear Solid 3 when you punch a soldier when your dress just right off. <laughs> and they'll salute you even if you punch them. That, 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 that's just fantastic. Hey, you, over here. I like how he's not bothered by that. Well, again, just like the just 3 guards. I'm surprised he's not like, Kida, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, smack him. Alright, I'm just going to move on to that position. <laughs> well, they're probably too afraid to like talk back. You know, it's like with Chef Ramsay. Yeah, it's like Metal Gear Solid 1 as well. You punch a soldier. What was that? And they just resume their position. <laughs> Okay, for some reason that didn't hurt you. But you hurt, that's weird. You hurt me though, so that's your price. You okay, so price. I think certain I think certain projectiles don't work on enemies. So Yeah, that's a, clearly clearly that one didn't work on him. Good, another radio. That one, however, managed to kill in one shot. Mm -hmm. So it seems that these crystals have certain effects on enemies, so gotta keep in mind which enemies you're fighting. Yeah. Where is this? I think we're in another courtyard. Well, you we can see that. <laughs> it's a courtyard, eh? Yes, I can see that. <laughs> yep. It's a giant lizard creature. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> okay, sharp. It's getting annoying now. <laughs> I was only referencing Johnny English. Yeah. Johnny English was funny. Not a great story, mind you, but it was funny. Mm. It was very funny. So. I mean, I find both it and the sequel pretty funny. Yeah, they're funny, but not great stories. But they're more not really meant well to be a story. Anyway, so. I can't carry any more of these. They were just meant to be mindless fun. So, I mean, that's the reason they are comedies, after all. Yeah, indeed. Like, if you wanted a story, you could just like go watch a natural James Bond film. Yeah, James Bond films are actually. Alright, I mean, I've seen quite a few of them. I mean, there are some good ones, but then there's ones I just don't think are that great, so. Oh, I, I don't blame you, because, like, some of them were uh, not that great in hindsight. Yeah, some of them are pretty good, but they aren't really that great for the most part. I mean, there were ones I enjoyed, like Casino Royale and some of the other ones. Golden Eye was a good one. Yeah, Golden Eye was a good one, but then there were ones where I'm just like, no, that was not worth my time, that was boring, and yeah. Yes, some of them are just not that great in comparison. Yeah. Like, Quantum of Solace, I thought, was not that great. I thought that one was boring, actually, if I remember. Yeah, wasn't really interested in that film. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta time that well on the platform. Yeah, I can see that. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you did, made me do it. <laughs> Oh shit, I, okay, that was a time I like overjumped that. Yeah, you look like you rushed that jump actually. Well, it's because, like, if you don't like move fast enough, it'll flip over and you get sent into the water anyway, so I'm like trying to rush through the jump as possible. R rush through the jump as possible. <laughs> yeah. What am I saying? Yeah, that's not an ideal way to do it. Well, that's the thing though, when you've got these platforms turning on you, know, isn't it? It's going to make you rush a lot more. <laughs> Oh, I, I was already on the platform there, but you know I overreacted. I think it's because you were moving while you were jumping. If you just jump and not move, you might have a bed. You might have a chance. To See, now I can't even manage a stationary jump. What fun! Yep. Change it to a different language. That might help. 
Never mind. Seriously, I always just select English because I can't understand different languages, so... Yeah, unless you're someone from, from another country, then that's fair enough. Or you're just interested in what the other languages are like. Yeah. It's like Rayman games, surprisingly. The original language was actually French. And then they dubbed it in English. And that's why the dub sounds awkward, so, at times. It's... That's why Rayman, like I remember playing Rayman 3 and I thought the acting was quite wonky at times and a bit very cheesy and over the top, so. Mm. And then when I played the French version it was like, wow, that's actually really good acting. But at the same time, they, the, the voice acting in English had a certain charm to it, despite its cheesiness, so. Yeah. So fortunate that I'm recording this, I could just skip over this part if necessary. Yeah. I bet there's gonna be people out there telling you, this is a basic jump, why are you messing up so badly? Oh, whatever. Like, even I can, like, mess up stuff sometimes. Yeah. At well, least you're not blaming the game this time, good boy. Yeah, that, that's what I meant earlier, when you were on the third platform. Oh, fucking hell. It looks really awkward because you slide off so easily. Don't want to try. Well, then let me get get you back up there and I'll give you a shot. Yeah, I might not do well, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. So, Remember, it's the directional pad and then A to jump. Oh, and press, yeah, press the R button to like, send yourself. Did you use the D-pad or...? Yeah, D-pad. Yeah, it looks really awkward. <laughs> let me try again. Yeah, no, I haven't played as much as you, so... Does she grab it automatically? Uh, you have to be standing on a certain ledge, and you have to be at the right distance to do it. If you're too close, you fly off. Yeah, you just bounce off the wall like a bouncy ball. Wow. Hey! There, you go. there we go, all done. Yeah. And that totally wasn't done with any assistance whatsoever. <laughs> I think that's what happens when I've been playing Tomb Raider so much, that's why.